When my Samsung microwave was just over a year old, it failed, giving me an SE or 5E error code, which the internet told me was the code for a failed membrane keypad. I called Samsung and was told that since the microwave was more than a year old, it was out of warranty and to call a local service company. I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy a new microwave or to pay to fix this one. As I researched it, I found people who claimed to have fixed it themselves by cleaning a few contact points in the unit. I figured I'd give it a try. As I'll show you, this worked for me. It took me about 15 or 20 minutes to fix it, and it's holding almost a month later. The best as I can tell, the source of most of these SE errors is that steam or smoke rising up from the stovetop corrodes or soaks the cables in the display panel. Remove this display and clean up the cables and you can get your microwave working like new. It seems kind of silly to make an over-the-oven microwave that fails when you use it over the oven, but at least the fix is pretty easy. First step was to unplug the unit. You don't want to shock yourself during the repair. The second step is to remove the exhaust hood or the vent grill on the top of the microwave. You do this by removing the two top vent screws and sliding the grill to the left and then up to remove it. If you own a freestanding microwave, you may have to remove all the sheet metal wrapped around the top and side before you can move on to the next step. The third step is to remove the top screw that holds the display panel in place and to pull up and pivot out that panel from the microwave to detach it from the unit. Online literature will warn you there's a gizmo inside the microwave called a high voltage capacitor that can store a dangerous amount of electricity. Best as I can tell, it's only accessible from the back of the microwave and nowhere near the panel will be working on. But I don't recommend that you poke your screwdriver into the body of the microwave to touch any of the coils you can see inside. Step four is to remove and clean all the wires plugged into the display panel that now hangs in front of the unit. There are a half dozen wires that must be removed, cleaned, and then put back into proper place as part of this fix. In most cases, it's easy to tell which cables go which way into what connectors. Probably wise to take a few seconds to study all the connectors before you remove them, and to use an indelible pen to mark any cables and connectors that you feel you might get switched during your reassembly. I started by removing the ribbon cable. To remove this cable, you pull up on the release lock near the circuit board before pulling out the ribbon cable. Take note of the red stripe, which is used to differentiate the left from the right side of the cable, and make sure you put it back where it came from. I don't see any other connectors that can be put back the wrong way, but check carefully and mark any you're unsure of. All the other cables can be removed by gently wiggling and pulling up on the connectors. If a connector resists a gentle tug, look for a locking tab on the cable that fits into a small notch in the side of the connector. This may need to be squeezed to release the cable from the connector. I cleaned all my cables and connectors by hosing them out with a can of compressed air and by rubbing them down with pieces of dry paper towel. A pencil eraser proved useful for gently buffing exposed connectors, and I used a sharp knife to gently push paper towel pieces into small crevasses. When everything was clean, I plugged all the cables back in where they came from, made sure they were all seated properly, and then pushed the ribbon cable back into place and pushed the ribbon cable lock back down. The time had come to put the display panel back into place. The tabs at the bottom of the panel get inserted into the corresponding holes into the microwave body and the panel is swiveled back into place. I wasn't sure if my fix was going to work, so I tested it out before I put the vent and the final three screws back into place. Plugged it in, reset the clock, and I was delighted to find my microwave worked again. It's been a month since the repair, and so far so good. If the unit fails again, I might give it another cleaning, or I might give Samsung another call. Since I'm now seeing reports of people who say that Samsung will now fix microwaves that are less than two years old with this problem. Make sure to mention that sites like ConsumerAffairs.com are listing this as a known issue that Samsung now pledges to resolve. Or you can opt to buy a new display panel for about 75 bucks, or rebuilt one from a company like MicrowaveDisplay.com for 35 bucks. My video should give you enough information to install one of these yourself if you want to try it. Love to hear which route you took and whether or not it worked for you. Thanks and ciao.